Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny, and I am so not an expert. Today, we're gonna to get to do something a little bit different. On my Facebook page, Danny and the Experts, I asked you guys what you wanted to see in the next video, and boy, did you guys come through. By an overwhelming demand, 100% of you wanted to see a scrap busting pot holder. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to take my some of my scraps from some previous projects that were never recorded on this channel, so the fabric won't really look um, familiar to you guys, but I have a bunch of two and a half inch strips and various pieces, so I went ahead and cut them up into little two and a half inch squares, and we're gonna make a 12 by 12, um, I'm sorry, an eight by eight block, and we're gonna use that as some patchwork that, to then make a pot holder. Now I did make one as a sample for myself just to try and make sure that I could remember the process before I tried to show it to you guys. So this is what um, my sample looks like. Hopefully the one we make will look a little bit better. This one's, it's a little rough if I'm being honest. It's a little rough, but uh, we'll be able to make the next one on the project. So if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the video and uh, let's get started. Hi friends. The clip you just watched was recorded on a Sunday. Today it is Wednesday. It has taken me this many days to get back in front of this camera and I'm not even sure that our project will be finished in this video clip. I don't know that I'm gonna have the strength to do it. I might have to wait a few more days. I'm not sure. I just finished post posting on our Facebook group um, that you won't see this video this week. It'll probably go out the next week. Um, and I mentioned that this is probably one of the most difficult pot holders I've ever made. Not because it's technically difficult. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest projects you'll ever make. Um, but it has turned into something much different and much more meaningful than I had originally anticipated. I know I don't owe you an explanation, but I feel like I should give you one anyway. I've made a commitment to this channel and to sharing my journey and my process with these quilts, and I think it's important that I share not just the good times, but the bad ones as well. Um, if you are not interested in storytelling, I understand that. I'll put a timestamp somewhere on the screen here to let you know um, what to fast forward to so that you can actually see the demonstration of the pot holder that we're making. Um, today is Wednesday, April 20th, or at least as of the recording of this video, it's Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. There are two days of the year that I can't breathe. Two days out of the year they just suck the air right out of me. Um, August 13th is the day I lost my grandma. And April 20th is the day I lost my dad. So, that's today, obviously. Well, I mean, three years ago today, but today nonetheless. And, um, so what does today have to do with this pot holder? Well, on Saturday, before I recorded the, um, intro that you just watched, I, uh, went into my bin of scrap fabrics and I pulled out a bunch of fabrics, cut them up, made the first pot holder. It went okay. Um, it could have went a little better. <laughs> But that's okay, you know, you learn from your mistakes, right? Um, so then I looked at the clock and it was already four o'clock in the afternoon. So I thought, well, I'll make the, I didn't really take any video. And I looked at the clock and I thought, well, it's already four o'clock. I have other things I have to do for my family. So I'll put this away and I'll record the video for it on Sunday after our live stream. Sunday we did our live stream where I figured out that I had missed a bunch of fabric 
it turns out that I did only buy enough fabric to make a twin size quilt, not a full size, but I cut up all the pieces to make a full size. So now I was going to be short on fabric. So, so after the live stream, I spent probably two and a half, three hours looking for more fabric because of course the fabric line we're using is no longer available. By the time I got the fabric ordered, it was already three o'clock in the afternoon. I had things I had to do with my family again. So I said, well, forget it. I'll just record the rest of this video after work on Monday. Monday and Tuesday rolled around and I, I don't know. I, I just could not monster up the, the strength or the emotion or I couldn't get my motivation together to be able to make this pot holder. And it's just, it was so silly because it's, it's such an easy project to make. It really is the easiest project you will make. So I couldn't understand why I couldn't get the motivation up because I wanted to, it's not like I didn't want to make it. So I, I just, I couldn't understand it. So then this morning I woke up checked my phone like I do every morning after the alarm goes off for the time and the date and the weather to see what I need to wear for today because you know it's April right now so the weather's all over the place and that's when I saw the date once I figured out what the date was I knew that today was going to be a hard day so I went about my normal routine probably a little bit slower than normal but I went about my normal routine and Got ready for work and left for work this morning. On the way into work, I have about a 45 to a 60 minute drive to work every morning. Just depends on how traffic's going. And I always use that time to kind of plan out my day, what tasks I'm gonna achieve, what goals I wanna set for myself for the day, maybe things I need to remember to do for the week, things like that. But I do a lot of thinking in the car um, on the way to work and on the way home. Sometimes I don't even remember to turn the, the radio on, to be honest. Well. Because of what today represents, my brain was on replay. It was replaying today, the day before, the day before that, the day before that in my brain from three years ago when my dad passed. And one of the things that popped into my head was on the second day after he made this decision to stop all of his treatments, the second day I went to go visit him and I brought him a gift. I brought him a, <clears throat> he was in a, they had moved him to a rehab, rehab home and he was in a hospital bed and you know, they're, they're metal and they're stiff and they're, they're just not very cheerful. So I had brought him, um, a small project that I had put together with some extra fabric I had. Um, I brought him a little table, um, a little bed runner. Um, it wasn't anything fancy. It was the second project I had, the second quilted project I had ever made. Um, and that's why it was a bed runner because it wasn't even big enough to be a table runner. <laughs> but I gave it to him. I put it on the end of his bed where his feet were so that when he did open his eyes and he saw it, hopefully it gave him a little bit of smile. My sister was also there and so was my mom. They brought in pictures and my sister hung a bunch of pictures on the walls and my mom brought in some um photo albums and it was it was a good day my dad wasn't completely awake but he wasn't completely asleep either so he had his moments of lucidness and I know he knew we were there and I, I know that he saw the bed runner and I know he saw the pictures my sister put on the walls. <laughs> a couple days later, we had to have my dad moved for a variety of reasons that I won't get into, but we had to have my dad moved from that facility to another one. Um, and somehow, I had went and visited him that morning before they had him moved, and I didn't notice it at the time. I didn't actually notice it until after they had moved him, but the bed runner was missing. I I don't know where it went. Maybe it would, got soiled somehow and the, the, the staff there took it to have it laundered. Maybe someone took it. Maybe 
Maybe my stepmom had brought it home. I didn't know, but all I know was it didn't make it um, to the new facility. And at the time, it really wasn't that important. You know, his health, his, his level of comfort was the most important thing. You know, a bed runner, it's not a big deal. It can be replaced. But anyway, on my drive into work this morning, that is what I was focused on. That, bud, that bed runner and how unfortunate it was that we never got it back. We never found it. My stepmom hadn't taken it home. And I never went over to that facility to ask for it. There were reasons for that. And maybe I should have. I don't know, but I never did. And now it's three years later, so... I think it's a little too late now. But anyway, as I was thinking about that this morning on my drive-in, I was picturing it in my head, and it's, you know, been four years, I think, since I made it. But I was picturing it in my head. It was brown-on-brown brown tones with a brown-on-brown brown batik fabric as the background. And for those of you who watched my live stream, or those of you who just watched the intro, those colors might sound familiar. Because unbeknownst to me, when I picked out the scrap fabrics for this pot holder, I picked up the scrap fabrics for that table, for that bed runner. So now every time I look at this pot holder, that's all I see. <laughs> so I'm not even sure that I can make the rest of them. I'm not sure that I have the strength to put the other three that I cut up together. But I know that in life you have to move forward. You can't, you can't let things like this cripple you. You have to keep moving forward. Otherwise, otherwise you put yourself in this negative place and it can affect all kinds of things. And I know if my dad were here, he'd be yelling at me. He'd be telling me to stop being so silly. That it's just a silly potholder. It doesn't mean anything. So, I'm going to put get the courage together to put these pot holders together. I'm going to figure out some way to get through this. <laughs> I have no idea what the next set of footage is going to look like that you might or might not see. Because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to record it. Because <laughs> this might be what you end up seeing. <laughs> um, part of me feels like I have to put these together to help me heal somehow. And the other part of me is absolutely terrified. I don't know why. I just am. So, anyway, that is why you didn't see a video from me this week. Or why you won't see a video from me for this week, I should say. Because I have no idea if I'm going to be able to record it or not. If I do, it'll be at the end of this video. If I don't, well, then the video will probably end here. Um... It'll probably end here, and I'll probably find a different set of fabrics to try and make a silly pot holder with. <laughs> if I'm not able to get these together. So. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. And hopefully I have managed to find the strength sometime this week. Or maybe this weekend, or not today for sure. <laughs> but sometime this week or this weekend put these potholders together for you 
and let's be honest for myself too i'll see you guys again soon bye morning friends it is saturday april 23rd and we're gonna attempt this <laughs> um i have no idea if this is actually gonna end up being a tutorial video or just a time lapse <laughs> we'll have to wait and see so um but for now i'm gonna try and make it a tutorial we'll, we'll see how it goes um i have my three pieces of two and a half inch squares so I have three sets of two and a half inch squares because I'm going to make three pot holders um, for a total of four. Um, the fourth one is, you can see it sitting there behind me. Um, these are scrap fabric, two and a half inch strips that I cut up into two and a half inch squares. And then these will make the patchwork block that you see on the front of the table runner. And then I have this beautiful brown on brown tone batik fabric for the background. And then I also have little pieces for the tab, the little hanging piece. I don't know what the technical name of it is, is to use to hang. So these are two inch pieces. These are two and a half inch strips, um, two and a half inch wide by five inch long. And then these are eight by eight squares. And then I've also cut um, eight by eight inch batting. This is just your regular standard 80-20 batting. And then I also have eight inch squares of the um of the insel bright as well so that is all you need you don't have have to do the patch block there you can actually just use um eight inch pieces so if you really want to be quick and simple about it just take two eight inch pieces um and and sandwich them between a layer of batting and a layer of insel bright i've seen some people on youtube use two pieces of batting and one piece of the insel bright my machine is not super strong so it won't go through all three of those layers of batting, it really only, it even struggles with two, but we're going to use two anyway. Um, you don't have to do the patchwork. Um, and you don't even have to put the little things on the, the top to hang it with either. I just wanted to try and challenge myself a little bit to um, make these. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and prepare these up real quick. Super easy to do. Make sure you have a nice hot iron because that will make things easier for you. Basically all we're going to do is we're going to press the seams on this. So I'm going to fold it in half. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. Oh, good, you can. We're going to fold it in half, press it down, and then open it up, and then we're going to fold it again so we end up with um, basically a, a strip like this that we're then going to sew on both sides together. So I'm going to do that real quick. Flat first. And then fold it up. Oops. Make sure it's nice and flat. There's one. I'll do the other ones later. And then we're going to open it up. We're going to take the bottom and fold it into that first seam that we made. And just iron that down. Okay, and then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. We're going to take this edge and fold it into the center. then when we fold the two pieces inside we have a nice strip tube so I'm just gonna sew an eighth of an inch seam on this one edge to close it up and then I'll sew an eighth of an inch seam on the other side just to make the stitching look even I do have my quarter inch presser foot on my machine, but I'm not really using it as a guide. Um, I'm just going to go real slow and use, kind of eyeball it really. Make sure my... Okay. 
Okay. Open it up. Take this, flip it over, and go again. Now we have our hanger, I guess you call it. So rather than put these pieces like this, we don't want that. We want them to go like this. So it makes a ribbon, basically. And so when we go to put these two pieces together in the quilt, we'll put them together like this. But for right now, we're just going to set it aside. So now we need to make our patch block. So I, I have 16 pieces of two and a half inch squares here. And we're just gonna sew them up into a patch block. They're super easy to sew up. I usually do them two at a time. Um, and just, you know, it's scrappy. So don't worry about, just make sure that, you know, you're trying to keep the colors from being together and just keep sewing them together, so. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, and I'm not sure that it'll make it in the video, but right now my hands are shaking like a little bit. Let me trim this up real quick. So, so if you use the four inch line on your ruler and you line that up with the center line of your patch block, and then just trim all four edges to meet up with that four inch line, you'll end up with a perfect eight inch block we can go ahead and put our pieces together. So first things first, we take the layer of batting and put that down on the bottom, and then we take our top and put that face up, okay? Because we're gonna kind of build this backwards because we're gonna do a pull through method. I find that one to be the easiest when you're doing things like that. You can do um, a traditional quilt and do a binding on it if you wanted to. You could totally do that. Um, I, I don't because to me that just makes things more difficult. But if you want to challenge yourself and do that, you're more than welcome. So I've got the quilt top here. Now I'm going to take this piece that we had built before. I'm going to put the two ends together like this. Okay. And I'm going to pin that to the top center of my piece. So I'm just going to take a single straight pin and pin that there just for a minute. So I've got that pinned there. And then I'm going to take a piece of my background fabric, my backing fabric, which this is a batik, so there's really no right or wrong size um, most of the time. But if you can figure out the right and the wrong side, make sure you're putting right side down. So you want your right sides together when you're sandwiching this. And it covers up that, that loop. And then the last but not least is a, pop, is a piece of our insulvrite that goes on the top. I'm actually going to pin all these pieces together so that they don't shift when we're quilting. Mm -hmm. Now on one end, just like you do any other pull-through method, I want to keep some space open um, so that I can actually get my hand in there to pull out. So I'm only going to pin about um, a third of the way on this side and a third of the way on this side and leave the middle third open. And then basically all we're going to do is we're going to just take a straight stitch quarter inch seam all the way around those edges. We're going to start it with this one pin here, Ooh, this way. We're going to start at this pin here. We're going to do a back tack here to secure it. We're going to go all the way around, all the way around, back up to the top here. We're going to be careful with that nice thick piece here where that um, loop is. And then we're going to stop at this pin here. We'll back tack here and we'll pull it off the machine. Then I'm going to go ahead and then we'll get to the next steps. Okay, I'm going to back tack a couple of times where that pin was just to secure it, secure it, ugh, and then pull it out. All right, so now we have all of our layers are sewn up together. I can feel where that loop was. It feels like it's nice and secure. I can see the two layers of it, so I know I'm good there. So now what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna trim this, there we go. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors, 
and we're going to clip the corners. Now clip the corners. We're going to clip, oh geez, we're going to clip them on above the stitching, but as close to the corners as we can. And all that does is that removes this bulk so then we can po poke out the corners later. So I'm just going to take my scissors here and just clip these corners. Now, if you're worried about there being, if you've used two layers of batting and the one insole bright and you're worried about too much bulk, you can also clip the batting and the insole bright um, in these seams if you're worried about there being too much bulk on the seams. I only used one, so I'm not concerned. All right, oops. Looks like I got that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to open this up between the two, the front and the back layers and pull everything through. I usually start at one corner. I get my thumb and my fingers all the way over to the one corner and then I pop it out and pull it all the way through the hole like this. And then I grab and I just keep pulling to get the other corner out too. And sometimes it's it's a struggle when they're just they're this small, but you can get it just be tough but gentle because you don't want to pull the steam apart, but you do also want to make sure you pull it through. So I've got both of those through, and now I'm just gonna pull the closer ones through one at a time. There we go. And this last one is usually the easiest one to pull through. Now I'm going to go ahead and poke out my corners. I can usually just use my fingers for this. Um, sometimes you have to use a pin. You take a pin and you just pull on the fabric gently. You can pull it out sometimes. Um, I know a lot of people say not to do that. They, you know, some people use a pair of scissors. I've seen that happen, but you have to be really, really careful with that because you can actually poke right through. This is when the purple thingy that I have works really well because it has the pointed edge. So I'm just gonna find the opening here and reach in there with the purple thingy and push out the corners. There we go. Okay. So that is, now it's it's kind of bulky, obviously, because it's kind of rolling through. Um, Donna Jordan has um, some a tutorial on pull-throughs on how to get these seams to lay a little bit flatter. And I, I've, I've used that tutorial before on bigger pieces. Um, I tried to do it that with this one, and, and it just didn't work as well. But basically what you do is you lay it down flat, and you roll... Um, the edge, it's pulling this way, so I'm going to do it this way. You roll the, the edge to one side and you flatten it. And then when you pull it back, it'll lay nice and flat for you. Um, mine is actually not doing too badly. So I think I'm actually okay. Um, if I remember, I'll try and put a link in the description for her. Mm. So looks like I did the loop wrong. You guys can see it. It's not the correct direction. I should have put this piece here up front, but that's all right. It is what it is. It should be okay. So now we're going to roll back, roll in, sorry, the top and bottom layers to kind of make a nice seam. Um, you can do this a couple of ways. It looks like I have some stitching that's coming apart from my block, so that's fun. Um, you can pin it if you want. You can iron it if you want. I'm going to iron it and then we'll see what it looks like after I'm done ironing it. There we go. Work. Okay. And now I'm going to take an eighth inch seam all the way around to secure it. So I'm just going to start again. I'm going to start in the middle because if I start in the middle, then I can get those um, stitching stitches to overlap and it looks a little bit cleaner than if I tried to do it from a corner. So I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. I have my quarter inch foot on, but I'm going to do an eighth of an inch and the bulk is going to be, you know, tough for my machine, but it's, we're going to, we're going to work through it. So again, I have my fingers back here pulling 
just not really pulling. Again, I'm just tugging, not pulling. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of stitches and then do a couple of back just to secure it. And then we'll keep going. back to our first section so we're going to go all the way down to where we started and we're just going to overlap the stitches a little bit um, to secure them turned out better than on that one I think. Now I can go in here if I wanted to and I could qu finish quilting this. I could go into these seams here and I could do like a, a you know through this one here and through that one here if I wanted to. Um, and I might later on I'm not sure. I'm going to kind of let this grow on me and see how I want to do it. For now I'm just going to leave it unquilted. Um, I kind of like it that way. It's simple. So that's it. See, I told you it really is an easy one. I just, it just wasn't as easy as I thought. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'll try and answer them as best I can. I'm not an expert. Um, I'll also, if I remember, I'll try and put some links down below for some tutorials from other experts on there um, on how they did it. Um, it might help you out a little bit. Uh, if I remember that Donna Jordan's about the pull through method, I'll do that as well. Um, I'll also put the um, cutting instructions down below as well. Super easy to, you know, the background is, uh, the backing is an eight inch piece. All the battings are eight inch pieces. And your front block, if you're going to do a patch block, just make sure that it measure, also measures 8 inch. If you're not going to do a patch block, then you would just cut two of these and just use two of these instead. Your background or your front or whatever you want to do and just two solid pieces and you can do it up that way. That would make your make things even quicker because then you're not working on the patch block. So, Okay guys, well that's it. The end of this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking around with me. Um, I'm pretty sure this will all be one video, but I might end up making it two. I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see how long it ends up being. Um, but I really appreciate you guys sticking around with me for this one. I've got two more to do. I think I'm going to do those off camera, though. Um, but hopefully I'll have all four of them done for you. And I'll have pictures to show you guys soon enough. If you haven't already, please make sure you consider liking and subscribing. If you subscribe to the video, make sure you check or to the channel, make sure you click that notification bell. Um, that will notify you every time a new video goes is posted. It'll also let you know the next time I go live. I am not going to go live this week. Um, like I said, today is the 23rd. Sunday will be the 24th. I will not be live on the 24th. Um, and there is a distinct possibility they may not be live next week either. I've got some stuff going on on the weekend. Um, so I may be, may be recovering on <laughs> Sunday. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I'll let you guys know. If also, if you haven't, um, if you do, if you are on Facebook and you want to follow us on Facebook, uh, Danny and the experts, um, I'll put a link to that in the description box below as well. That is also where we've been, um, kind of sharing our stories. Um, if you have your own story, I would love to hear it. 
Um, and we're also sharing all the projects that we're working through um, as they progress and things like that. And I'll post pictures of these cool, these pot holders when they're finished. So, all right, guys, you have a wonderful weekend. Um, this one, this week has been a rough week for me. It's kind of fitting that it's rained all week. That's kind of been fitting for how this week has gone for me. But uh, hopefully next week will be better. I'll see you guys again next week. And um, yeah, just keep moving forward. Just remember that. One step in front of the other. Keep moving forward. I'll see you guys later.